For years, modding has been integral to PC gaming, providing an edge over consoles with the practically endless possibilities. Many games these days have been modded to hell, especially on PC, and they can create something entirely new. One well-known game which has a plethora of mods available is Doom, of course, and these mods can range from gems such as GoldenEye Doom to Deus Vault and to Zandrona, which was formerly known as Skulltown. But I think that one mod has really slipped between the fingers of many people, and this particular mod is called Zanzan. When I say this game isn't well known, I mean that the only other video of it on YouTube that I can find is a trailer by the creators themselves. Zanzan is a 3D total conversion for Doom, released in 2000, which was created by Ace Team, who you may know as the creators of Rock of Ages, Xeno Clash, and, uh, Batman. Doom. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. The coin says you lose, Batman. Alright then, I guess it's time to play it. Oh! Z Doom didn't work? Yeah, I don't even know what this means. I suppose I'll have to look for alternatives. Let's try it in Zandronum. Ah, here we go. New game, Mortal, and here we. Wait, what? Is that a cyber demon? Uh, I think something is wrong. Let's try GZ Doom this time, because that G totally makes all the difference. There we go, oh god, what is that? So a giant frog just died. Hmm, okay. And here we have it. This is Zanzan. So if we just walk along here and... Whoa, spiders! Oh god, let's just go and... Whoa! What the fuck is that thing? Whatever it is, it scared the hell out of me when I played this. Oh god, oh god, there's more of these... things. Why don't I have a weapon? Oh, is that my character? Jesus, it's hideous. Moving on, uh, what's this? Oh, it's a bat thingy. And the, the thingy is talking to me. I'd feel better if the game provided a backstory or some lore or something. And that's the thing. The game provides none. It just tosses you in there and says, Here you go, here's a dying frog. By the way, you're a fucking Zanzan. After this bracing dialogue, we find a new enemy. The best way to describe him, her, uh, it? is that it's essentially an imp from Doom. And by that I mean the coding is pretty much exactly the same. Just look at this. Anyway, it's clear that with no weapons, these creatures should be avoided because they do a hell of a lot of damage. Let's just avoid all these enemies and head over to this lava area. Alright, place your bits everyone. Will the stone slab sink? Do you want the short answer or the long answer? Short answer? Yes, they sink. Long answer. Oh god, it burns! What's this rocky circle thing? Oh yes, a weapon. Prepare to die. Oh. Oh. That's really effective. So I quickly run out of ammo and. What's this? I had a weapon the entire time and the game neglected to tell me? Huh. Gee, thanks. I then move on to what seems to be a boss fight. One of those four-legged bastards tell me I can't beat him with fire orbs, which I assume is that gun I found earlier. Because he's the great Zidivist and he invented them. If the effectiveness of these orbs is anything to go by, then this ain't gonna be too hard. Ah, shit. Wait, did I save it all? No, no I didn't. At least we know that we have a weapon this time. Alright, so I made my way through the level again, so now I can put a beat down to this Zidivis guy. Wait, I hit him once and he gave up? Huh, <laughs> so much for being the great Zidivist. He then attempts to bargain for his life by telling me info. Hold on a second. We get the option to kill him? Okay, I actually think this is pretty cool. I wonder if this could have consequences, and if so, that's quite awesome. Regardless, I decided to finish the fight. What's this? 
The Zesta Council? Zesta Council? What kind of name is that? It sounds like a club for freaks who just love zesty lemons. Anyway, as we enter the lemon party, get it? We find more of those four-legged freaks. I guess my actions earlier did have consequences because the great Tori, Tor, Toriam, Toriam is here to avenge his friend, and he called me an abomination. What a jerk! Toriam seems to be just as great as his friend, despite having a more effective attack. If by effective I mean he hits himself with it most of the time and ends up dying rather quickly as a result. Good job, Toriam. Now, the next room is one point where the game actually got tricky. Doesn't look so hard, right? Well, think again, because suddenly I'm trapped in a room, and I have to release my inner dojo master to try and avoid these blue balls of doom. Doom. Get it? Because it's a doom mod? Yeah. <laughs> now, if I can just... Fuck, if I can just... God damn. Alright, we did it. Now, that item up there better be a worthy reward. Is that a hammer? Oh. My. God. This is... This is awesome. Seriously, this weapon is pretty much the most satisfying weapon in the game. At least from the weapons I had used. It packs just so much punch. You just feel like Thor slapping away creatures dramatically with Mjolnir. I love it! We finally did it! And that was just level 1! <laughs> that was just level 1! Level 2 is relatively straightforward, but there was actually one point where I got lost. Because it appeared that there was no way forward. I mean, I was sure I needed to be up there, but I can't just walk up and there's no jump button. As it turns out, there is a jump button, but it wasn't even bound to anything on my keyboard. I'm not entirely sure whether this is a problem with Zanzan itself or just GZ Doom, but either way, I wasted far too much time wandering in circles. At this point in the game, things get quite stale. Nothing different really happens, and the novelty of these weird creatures has worn off. I mean, we get no new enemies whatsoever. This is basically the slump of the game. I was on low health, and I find myself in a narrow corridor. The, uh, steely gaze of the four-legged bandit staring deep into my forlorn eyes. And then he kills me. Again, and again, and again, and again! On my sixth attempt at fighting this bastard, I finally put the smack down on him. But after this point, it became necessary to save after every enemy. Now let me tell you something. This isn't fun. It's tedious, and the last thing a game should be is tedious. Whoa ho ho, what's this, a rave room? For some reason, I don't trust these pots. They're really disconcerting. Okay, so we found Kukayam's museum, where the entry is punishable by death? Jeez, I'd hate to go there on a school trip. Oh god, what is that? I knew I couldn't trust those damn pots. Now one has grown hooks and wants to kill me. Oh god, keep hitting it, keep hitting it! Oh, I killed it? Well, that wasn't so hard. Moving on, we find ourselves at a door. A very slow door, which takes us to the next level. Wow, this music is pretty rocking. Just look at this animal just headbanging over here. Suddenly, a large headless humanoid figure appears, so I guess this is the boss. This boss is fairly challenging, but if you've already gotten this far, it's nothing impossible. The fight itself consists of three stages, the first being where he animates objects to attack you and uses melee attack. The second stage is a homing ranged attack stage, and it's pretty much the hardest part of this fight. The third stage has him limping and uh, throwing snakes at me? Oh yeah, and he has one final stage too. <laughs> it's called Dead. As the screen melts away, dramatic music sets in, and the ending cutscene begins. It tells you every named character you killed, and also tells you that apparently the headless dude was trying to save humans all along? What? So we were the bad guys? I'm confused. Anyway, the Zanzan complains about being mortal and walks off sullenly into the distance, which doesn't actually seem that distant. This may be the end of the game, but this review is not over yet. This game may only be a Doom mod, but it falls short in that it's so dull. 
However, I really like what it has done with the graphics, and the music is pretty good. And let's not forget that there is actually a choices system in the game, which wins brownie points with me. The story is a little confusing as well, but it makes sense when you read the online comic. Why they couldn't put this comic into the game though, I have no idea. That's pretty much all I have to say about Zanzan. There's actually one question which still plagues my mind. What even is a Zanzan? I hope you enjoyed this first review. I'm not entirely sure how good it was, so I'm going to need some input on this one. But if you enjoyed it, I would suggest that you subscribe if, if you want. And if you would like to see Let's Plays, then you can subscribe to my other channel, Platonic Gaming. Uh, thanks, I guess.